What's up guys, Lenny Reed, Nano Diesel Products. Today, we're gonna to talk to you about turbos and drive pressure. I've had this kit for a long time. It used to be a steak knife box, now it's just full of little brass fittings, a gauge, more brass fittings. But this is kinda of cool. This is just a cheap gauge. Checking drive pressure. Okay, the reason why I got this liquid filled gauge, really nice tool, and uh, it's just a high quality piece. You do not need this in order to check drive pressure in a truck. What you need is, like I said, any cheap gauge. Zero to like 100 PSI, zero to 60, depending on your situation. Um, that's probably all you're gonna need. Now, what I've got here is a little coil. This is actually about two feet of uh, copper line, just one eighth inch copper line. Goes to a union and then off to one eighth inch air brake line. This is plenty long enough that I can run this from the exhaust manifold, take your pyrometer out, 1 8 inch NPT, and then I've got all those other fittings in there in case we have to go into somebody else's funky drilled out hole. So install this into the exhaust manifold. This acts as a heat sink so it doesn't melt my plastic air brake line. This I just run underneath the hood, through the fender, into the door jam, then I can tape this gauge onto the dashboard and watch my drive pressure temporarily. The reason why I'm doing this video is because this morning I had a guy call up and he says, hey man, I got this SXE 61 and it smokes really bad and it's got somebody's tuning in it and it smokes really bad and I said, take tuning out and he goes, I did that uh, and basically like it smoked bad then. I said, okay, well, what's the drive pressure and how much boost pressure and what's the turbine wheel and turbine housing you have? So this is a 57. That doesn't give you all the information you need to know about turbocharger. We also need to know turbine housing A over R. We also need to do turbine wheel. So why is that all? It, it's a big system. It's very important. Um, this little turbo can pump like 56 pounds of air per minute, if memory serves me correctly. It's a little S200 frame. And in its application, it's kind of a high speed, high rev up turbo. They use a T4 flange because they actually do make 56 pounds. That's rated for like 550 horsepower. So you're gonna get the most effective flow out of a T4 flange. On a lot of Cummins powered pickup trucks, they're still using T3 flanges, which is actually a smaller diameter than this T4. Move my pops can. So we got this little T4, this little tiny turbo packs a really good size punch. This T3 stuff, old school, still works great. This happens to be a, uh, a turbocharger that we're testing right now. Might actually start selling it. It's a wastegated housing. In the past, I've always tried to, to, to size the turbine housing so it matches the compressor and the engine and the RPM you're gonna be like running it in. Um, gates are kind of cool. Low RPM motors are going to make less drive pressure. High RPMs are going to make more drive pressure. How do you get rid of drive pressure? Choosing the right turbine housing, turbine wheel, waste gating it. This is an external gate, 45 millimeter. This is something that you would weld into the exhaust manifold and you would run this pipe where it blows downstream into the exhaust or you could just blow it directly in the atmosphere but you've got a huge wastegate surface area right there so if you're going to do something like compound turbo great big turbocharger this thing which one did i grab so this is a precision 88 millimeter compressor wheel it has a g trim turbine wheel in it so the turbine wheel is massive the balance here is actually the opposite of what people usually do. We had this built because we were gonna blow a couple of like 98s into this and use a triple turbo kit. We got a huge turbine wheel because this is gonna be our manifold turbocharger and all of them pounds per minute are gonna come in and they're gonna make a couple hundred pounds of drive pressure. So 
With the big turbine wheel, big turbine housing, you're relieving a bunch of that pressure. We're still gonna require a couple of 45 mil gates or maybe 160 or maybe a couple of 50s. It would take a lot of gate to do that. <sighs> Slow down, talk about this. Customer this morning says, the truck smokes. All right, well, run it back to the stock tune. He says, I tried that and then I called the turbo company they said I would require like aftermarket tuning in order to get the smoke out of it. it. Sounds to me like a bunch of bull. I think that with a drive pressure test, you or he or anybody else out there could actually size the turbo correctly. And potentially he was running an, uh, a wastegated housing. And what that means is inside this little turbine right here, I can feel there's two little holes. They're probably the size of a nickel. If that wastegate flap that's inside here is cracked open just a little bit, then you're losing drive pressure before it starts to give you a boost and it's gonna give you a bunch of smoke on the bottom end. Once engine RPM increases, you overcome that leak and then it settles into its happy spot. Once you make a bunch more drive pressure, depending on where you've got that tension set, you're gonna start to lose drive pressure out the wastegate pucks or out the wastegate ports. You're gonna slow down the turbo wheel and manage that boost versus the drive. Traditionally speaking with these motors, we like to see them at about one to one. So if you're making 50 pounds of boost, but you're doing it at 70 pounds of drive, your delta is too much. Now, I want you to think about this for a moment. You've got a compressor wheel that's designed to make say 35 to 40 PSI of boost. You're, you're driving it so hard that you're making 50. Well, what's happening is the compressor wheels whipping so hard and going so fast, the blades are starting to lay over. They're starting to extend and they're, they're losing their curvature. You're grabbing the same CFM of air from the atmosphere, but you're beating it up and heating it so hot that it's, it's taking up more size, more room. Intake air temperature goes way up. Air density goes way down. So even though you're making 50 pounds of boost compared to say 38 pounds of boost, you're gonna be making the same horsepower, if not worse horsepower, and you're asking the intercooler to work double time to try and cool the air back down to bring the air density back up before it actually goes in the intake valve. Exhaust valve, piston goes up, piston goes down, exhaust valve, boom, out the air she goes. Now, if you're taking, say, uh, a tire, and you go to air it up and it's dead flat, there's zero PSI in there tire almost instantly starts to rise itself up and you check the air pressure and there's still zero. You, you got your air tank, let's say it's set at 120 PSI and you go to blow more air into it. Well, now from zero to like say 50 PSI, it's very efficient and you're transferring air from the air tank at 120 into the tire at zero very, very quickly. Zero turns into one, one turns into two, two turns into three, so on. Pretty soon you're gonna to get to a point where the air tank pressure and the tire pressure are starting to balance out and they're starting to get equal. The CFM leaving the air tank slows down. It's having to work a lot harder to transfer its energy into the tire. The reason I bring that story up is because with drive pressure, if you have say 50 PSI or 60 PSI of drive pressure, the exhaust valve cracks open and the energy is supposed to leave the valve hit the turbine wheel and downstream she goes. The only reason you've got this thing is so you can make more boost, right? But if your drive pressure gets to be like higher than your boost, the air going through the motor slows down as it's leaving the motor. Excess smoke, excess heat. A lot of these wastegated turbine housings, back in the old day, we weren't managing exhaust gas temperature very well at all. They cracked very frequently. They just weren't great pieces back then. And guys, we're always trying to pinch the wastegate down to make more boost. More is not better, guys. Depending on the compressor wheel, more is not always better. If you've got compound turbos, let's go with a super basic turbo like an S488. This is a question that I got this morning as well. S488 has a 96 millimeter exducer on the turbine wheel, 96 millimeter there, and it was 88 millimeters on the compressor wheel inducer. I know that compressor map and it makes about 160, 165 pounds of air per minute, 
So typically you can see that thing make 1450 to 1550, maybe 1600 horse if you've got everything just right. If you took that S480 as a single and made it pump the 88 mil wheel over the 96 through a 1.32 housing, it's not gonna be the most throttle responsive, but it's gonna be the most efficient that it can actually be. The only way to make that thing more efficient would be to add a wastegate on top. And what that would do is as you start consuming 165 pounds a minute through the motor, you could pass it and drop the exhaust manifold drive pressure, maybe get it three, four, five pounds less than your boost, and you'll really see some magic happen. I've, I've done that several times in my life. It works out quite well. Like trying to get that drive pressure to sub what the uh, boost pressure is makes them run really, really, really cold. They make a lot of power and turbochargers are now not gonna spin themselves to death. In the old day, and it still happens today, guys will take the, the reference hose to the wastegate actuator, they either pinch it, kink it off, get the wastegate to where it won't function. You've just limited the amount of horsepower that motor can output by turbine wheel size and the A over R or the CM of your turbine housing. So if you've got a HX35 and you put a big fancy wheel on the compressor side of it, let's say you go from a, what, a 55 millimeter wheel up to a 62 millimeter wheel, now you can grab more air from the atmosphere, but if it can't leave that turbine wheel or turbine housing, as I break my 15 year old box, dang it, I'm gonna have to get more steak knives now. If you can't get that air, to leave that turbine wheel as fast as it's coming into the motor, then drive pressure in the exhaust manifold is gonna go up. It's gonna cost you horsepower. That's when you would want this arm to function, allow those wastegate doors to trap, to the, the wastegate doors to flap open, and then you're gonna have more exhaust gas flow leaving the turbine housing, increasing the horsepower, decreasing the exhaust gas temperature. It's pretty simple, right? So, real quick, go over it one more time. To check your drive pressure, you're gonna want just a cheap gauge. You can get anything at Napa or wherever, inexpensive gauge. You might have something in your toolbox. You might need to run and go buy something. Make sure it starts at zero and the needle's not already hung at five pounds because then you got a bad gauge. But uh, this, you can tape down in your truck to the dashboard. You can even lay it like on the windshield wiper. I've done that because you're not gonna leave drive pressure in there forever. If you try that, which what'll happen, is the carbon is gonna end up going into this tube and it fills it up and the drive pressure gets stuck. So drive pressure is not something you need to adjust. Once you adjust it the first time, you get it correct. You can remove the drive pressure gauge and move on with your life. But it's truthfully the only real way that you can properly size a turbocharger. So if you've, if you've got something and you're, you're wanting to go with a bigger turbo, there's lots of guys you can ask and everybody's gonna give you a different opinion. If you've got something and you wanna start learning how to properly size your own turbocharger, I highly recommend, just as my buddy Lawrence told me like 24 years ago, get yourself a drive pressure gauge. You don't have to use it all the time, but every single time you do something to the turbo, if you change the turbine housing, change turbine wheel, change compressor, check the drive pressure for a couple of days and see how it responds and how it acts and how it feels in the truck going down the road. You can learn a lot about turbochargers doing that. Uh, well guys, that's another supposedly quick video. There's still lots of questions I'm sure a bunch of you have. Feel free to comment below and we'll see what we can answer for you or shoot a call Dynamite Diesel Products and we'll help you out as best we can. Thanks. Lenny Reed, over now.